Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Sack Time here on the Sack Time channel. It's like this is Sackula, but whatever. It's going to be the Sack Time channel eventually. I can't change it, but never mind, all right? Listen. Okay, so today we're here to talk with you about the new 3DS, and I just wanted to or, uh, give you order. <laughs> I wanted to give you some hands-on impressions. Um, this is one of those videos I don't really like cut and like if you hear me say a bunch of stupid stuff I just sort of leave it in so you're gonna have to deal with that. So um, maybe I'll practice doing that eventually later but uh, don't count on it. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and talk about uh, this system because it just came out recently and there's a lot uh, you know of, of people throwing out their impressions and stuff and uh, it's a really great little machine and there's you know maybe one or two little things that I'm not quite as into but let's uh, let's get into that okay. First of all, and I'm going to do this, I don't exactly have a webcam, so we'll see uh, if this works. We have a size comparison here of the 3DS XL compared to the uh, the new 3DS, okay? What you can see, um, new right here, classic right here, and they're both almost the same size. If you can see very carefully, maybe, um, this is slightly, I mean, it looks like half a centimeter taller than the other one. There's probably actual measurements on online and uh, you can just deal with that and that's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, get to a little bit more of the um, the meat and potatoes of what the uh, the differences are and if you should actually end up upgrading or not. So with the original 3DS, great system. It has a nice snappy kind of like, hey, I'm opening up, uh, snap, snap to somebody next to you in bed um, and you snap, they might wake up and hit you. So you got to be careful with these machines. Whereas the new 3DS, a little more muted, it's kind of there, but not exactly, okay? So, uh, obviously with the classic 3DS, you have a normal standard button layout, um, no no C-stick, of course, uh, only regular L and R buttons, which are still very sufficient. Uh, these are a little softer, maybe just because I've used them a whole, whole lot, um, whereas the new ones are a little bit more uh, clicky, which we'll get into. And really the only uh, two beefs I have with the new system uh, have to do with uh, sort of tertiary features, which are that the stylus on the original model, ah, uh, right-handed, slip it out with ease, okay? Uh, and also access to the memory card port right here is much simpler uh, on the classic 3DS models, whereas with the new 3DS, you do actually have to take off these little screws and force off the back plate, which feels kind of scary, uh, almost a little bit flimsy, um, and that's that's something that, you know, Kind of freaks me out a little bit, but you pretty much just got to do it once unless you want to upgrade your memory card, and you should be good. The only other thing that's a little bit weird to me is the fact that the stylus now comes out from uh, from right down here, okay? So, you know, that just takes some getting used to, but it's a nice, thick, good stylus. It's nice and flush and feels good with the system. And now that I'm getting used to it, which is pretty much just, it's just a matter of time before that happens, um, you're good to go. So, of course, on the system itself, we have two extra L and R buttons, ZL and ZR, uh, akin to the Circle Pad Pro, which the uh, the regular 3DS and the 3DS XL also had. Okay. Um, in addition to that, the cartridge slot is now down here. Uh, it feels like it's going to be a little bit more secure, as the only issue I actually had with this in the cartridge slot is that when I had this walking around, you know, I put it like in um in my pants pocket, my cargo pants, because that's all I wear for some weird reason. Uh, every now and then, the cartridge would actually sort of pop out occasionally, and that sucked. Uh, if I was in the middle of a game, it didn't happen often, but every now and then it did. Phoenix Wright once or twice, and maybe something else. Uh, whereas this one feels more secure, and I don't think I had any issues with it at all so far. Now, um, they're, they also moved the power button, which is now down here. And I'm going to tell you something. I've actually, I've accidentally turned the power off once while playing in the middle of a game. I was in Majora's Mask uh, halfway through a uh, dungeon, and... Uh, well, I had an issue with that. And the reason is, the way I hold a 3DS is I actually brace it with my pinkies down here at the bottom for maximum like stability. So when I'm pressing the L and R buttons, I don't know, I can hold it the other way, but it feels more secure to me, and maybe this is just me and I know it's weird, but uh, I, I secure the system like this. So with the uh, the XL, or the, uh, the new 3DS, I was playing, my pinky was right at the exact right spot, I was pressing too hard, and boom, the power screen comes up, and once the power screen like comes up and says, hey, you can turn off your system, that's it. That's it, okay? Uh, however, there are a handful of brand new functions that this thing can do, such as uh, built-in native Amiibo support. Now, that's always exciting, so we're going to go ahead and do a quick little uh, Amiibo, well, sorry about the camera being right there, um, sort of sampling so you can see what's going on. And I was, I was playing something earlier, we're going to load up Smash Brothers, and I'll show you how this Amiibo nonsense ends up working. Okay, 
So, uh, also the loading times have quickened dramatically from the system uh, from the previous. So that uh, that helps a ton. And let's have Bowser walk us through. I'm actually not going to do any sort of voiceovers because I feel that would disrupt the quality and the integrity of what I'm trying to do here. So, okay. All right, let's go ahead and start. Um, what's weird to me, well, since you can't like touch anything on the bottom screen, as you can. Okay, fine, see, I just did that. Uh, I'm used to the Wii U version where the bottom screen, uh, the, the gamepad actually doesn't do like anything. You can't actually tap menus and buttons and stuff, uh, which kind of throws me off. It's really strange. Um, also taking me a bit to get back into uh, Smash Bros. Weird, okay. Anyway, so, here's what we're gonna do. I load this up, and go to Smash, oh no, actually I think I go to uh, Amiibo, no, I can't even do it from Smash. Okay, so we hit ZR in the back to activate Amiibo, and it says, hey, tap your Amiibo. Easy? Yes it is. Alright, throw him right there, boom. And let me just <laughs> turn off the Amiibo immediately. What am I doing wrong here? Okay, see that? Bowser, except he's spelled all stupid, Bowser. Okay, uh, level 38, he's, uh, he's pretty fresh. We'll, um, we'll just continue talking while he fights uh, with the computer. We'll do a level nine. Okay, so, okay. So, um, let's do a random stage as well. All right, so uh, we also have, obviously, this brand new C-Stick, which is right up here, and I found it to actually be infinitely more comfortable and capable than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't use it for Smash Brothers because I also don't really use a C-Stick in Smash Brothers, uh, but it's kind of a nice perk for people who want to do that. However, there is no setting thus far in Smash Brothers for what it can do, so it simply acts as a normal uh, C-Stick and just does Smash attacks. Um, conversely, you also cannot use Circle Pad Pro style button layouts to optimize uh, for like the ZL and ZR. ZL just mimics L, and ZR just mimics R. Therefore, there's not really a whole lot you can do uh, in terms of extra customization, um, and they're just sort of, if you want to extend your fingers back further, you're able to. Uh, for a game like a Majora's Mask, though, this C-Stick actually, can you see, uh, works extremely well. Um, it's not like a stick where you have to like press like the sides of it, however, but like you basically press your thumb on top, and if you like just sort of nudge it right and left, uh, it's tremendously precise, and it works really, really, really well. So, uh, it's going to take some getting used to it for some folks, and of course not all games are going to use it, which is a shame, because I wish a lot of games would be uh, retro-upgraded to, uh, to capitalize on that, such as, uh, you know, even Ocarina of Time, or a bunch of other 3D games that could conceivably use this. Um, okay, so there, Bowser 1, whatever. All right, let's talk about a couple other things, which is now also the volume knob is now up on this side. The other really, really nice part about this is that the uh, the volume on this system seems to be considerably louder than it was on the standard XL. Great machine, but the volume was actually lower, as far as I could tell, than the original uh, 3DS. On top of that, and the camera obviously cannot capture any of this, is that the 3D now has uh, this really rad, super smoking new, like, uh, stabilizing mechanism which uh, works in part with the camera right up here and an infrared sensor in case it gets too dark so it can actually still track your eyeballs and see where your head is and adjust uh, the 3D accordingly. It's a very impressive feature, uh, tremendously welcome and hopefully it like lets people play in 3D uh, much more often because you're no longer having to worry about the sweet spot coming and going. Okay. Um, so, uh, the only other really new features, and I guess I'm kind of in the light right here, is that the home button is now relegated to a little spot right down here, uh, its own little separate button, and Start and Select have actually been moved over here. Now, this might be weird, but I would love if Start was over here and Select was over here, just because there's something about the way that was originally set up where I would always hit Select, always left-handed, and Start would always be right-handed. So it just became like a force of habit with a bunch of old classic controllers, and still is to this day with anything that allows it. Uh, that's frivolous and kind of silly and doesn't really matter, but just something that, you know, could have been kind of cool. Whatever the case, uh, the new 3DS is, it's a remarkable system, and uh, if you get a chance to check it out, you know, it might really make some big differences in what you do uh, gameplay-wise. And we're actually going to cut back to, uh, to standard view real quick. So, as a machine, um... You've probably read a lot of reviews where people ask, well, is it worth it? Is it worth me upgrading? Is it something that I, I'm ready to get into 
just yet. Now the thing is, I don't believe it is a mandatory machine unless you need latest and greatest and you're just sort of like a sucker like I am uh, for, for getting, you know, whatever is sort of new. Now, it's, it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. The, the camera stick, again, or the C-Stick not being used by every game does not make it imperative. For stuff like Majora's Mask or, say, Kingdom Hearts or Metal Gear, uh, it works tremendously well and will really make a big difference in what you're doing gameplay-wise. But um, at this point, since you know I have yet to actually see uh, Xenoblade or any of those kinds of games running on it in person, um, obviously that's the one big exclusive, we don't know just yet if it's going to be like, you know, holy crap, yeah, you do have to have this, but as of right now, I'd say if you don't need to upgrade, you don't have to quite yet. Maybe give it a year down the road, see what they end up doing with it. Um, but if, if you're able to, if you can trade it in, sell your 3DS to a friend, or do something to basically do the upgrading process, very worthwhile. Um, and what I would also recommend doing, this made my journey infinitely easier, was I actually grabbed an, uh, a micro SD adapter uh, for my computer, or for my, my SD card, um, and I transferred everything right off the bat to the micro SD. So my entire transfer process, which is probably like 18 gigs of stuff, uh, took about 20 minutes. It didn't take me any time at all. I mean, I had to back up stuff to my computer earlier, but it, uh, in the long run, it saved me a ton of time, a ton of, uh, effort and, uh, nothing was lost in the process. So, you know, while it might be confusing and Nintendo does risk, you know, maybe uh, alienating some customers by saying, hey, there's, you know, now new 3DS exclusive games, it's very akin to the original Game Boy to Game Boy Color situation where you can upgrade, it's still backwards compatible, but yeah, there's going to be some exclusives you got to worry about, and it depends on how well they decide to market that, because we just don't know at this point. The name, again with the Wii U, might throw some people off, but I also don't think they could rebrand the system entirely. So it's kind of a tricky boat that they're in. Um, well, whatever the case, if you have one of these systems, I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if opportunity comes up for one of you guys to get one of these, um, granted we don't have like the smaller of the new 3DSs here, we just have the XL, it's still a worthwhile investment. It feels tremendously comfortable. The big screen looks great. The 3D looks great. And uh, I don't think you guys will be disappointed. So hopefully you enjoy, and hopefully you enjoyed this video because... I know I did. I liked it so much it made me go out and buy a 3DS XL. New. Yeah. yeah. I'm also really looking forward to uh, when people start trading these in at my store and we have used new 3DS XLs. So it's, you know, there's, there's a world of confusion in for, for retail employees, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that as it comes. Till then, have a sack time.